price in the Whitestown area of this area where the kids actually go to Lebanon schools. We, we had some research done on that. We understand the average sales price for those homes is about 211000 and the median sales price, so where it's some are half or above and half or below, is about 203000 So we believe our homes will, on average, and be greater than the average and the median homes in that area, and at the top end will be uh, significantly um, more than the homes in our area. Next slide, please. Oh, so this is our, uh, I just ran through about the sizes uh, and sort of summarized it. Next slide, please. So in examining this, um, we also have understandably a big Mr. concern. Mr. Thierry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but the, the microphones coming together is creating a weird, just when the. Thank you. No I apologize. As you can see, uh, I am technologically challenged, uh, but we'll get through here. The, uh, there was very much concern, understandably, about traffic. And folks, there's no question about this. This is going to increase traffic on Main Street 650. Um, I was there. I've been to the site now four or five times. And I think uh, it's, I was there this, just this past Saturday, and uh, there is very little traffic on a Saturday up on that road. During the week, I've seen much more traffic. But we asked a and Engineering, a uh, Indianapolis-based uh, traffic engineering firm, to do a traffic study. And they did uh, uh, traffic counts and studied the roads. And what they concluded and what this exhibit shows is that at each of the intersections at 650 and Pierce Street, at 650 and Hewitt Street, and at 650 and County Road 200 South to the north, and at our proposed access drive, that the existing streets can handle the traffic that will eventually come. And the, and the point I would appreciate the Planning Commission keeping in mind is while this is a sizable development, it won't be here next year. It won't be here next summer. The first homes would probably be not uh, occupied until late 2019, early 2020. And we would expect that a, a development like this could take seven to 10 years so that to, to fully uh, develop out. So, so there will be time for roadway improvements, but the one improvement that we would make right away and we have the real estate to do that, would be here at the entrance to the subdivision, we would have a lane so the traffic could go around northbound and a lane here so the traffic could come off southbound so that it would not impede traffic from coming in or going out of the uh, community. The uh, next slide uh, deals with what I do understand it's a concern over Hewitt Street, and it is a small street, no question about that. And you can see from the, this slide that Hewitt Street is only about 12 feet wide, but there is room, members of the Planning Commission, to expand Hewitt Street. And what this slide shows is that there's a significant right-of-way, that is, it's already been dedicated to the town. Those are those yellow lines up there at the top. So while the pavement is only 12 feet wide, there's about 30 some feet of width that you, the road could be expanded in. So if Hewitt Street needed to be expanded, my point is there's room to do that uh, within the town's existing right of way. The next slide, please, Brittany. Um, this slide is designed to show that the uh, there's quite a bit of trails and a green area within the community. I think there's about 52 acres of common area and green area within the community, which is one of the elements in your zoning ordinance when you're looking at planned unit developments. Um, and so that's about 27, almost 28 percent of the whole community is reserved for green area. And in that, there are significant trails and sidewalks and I think the 
distance is, there's just short of 10 miles of sidewalks and about just short of a mile and a half of trails. And the next slide should show that. Yes, so you can see the idea behind this community is that through the use of sidewalks and trails, folks could ride bikes, walk, all the way down to the uh, Big Four Trail and then into the legacy core area and into the common areas of the community, the swimming pools and the playgrounds and the ponds and the park areas without ever getting in an automobile. So again, a, an attempt to create a walkable, uh, pedestrian friendly community. Our, our next slide is from uh, the staff report. And I've just highlighted a couple of things uh, that the staff pointed out uh, in its land use goals. And one of those is to provide or promote uh, residential densities for different product types that are attractive to individuals and families in all phases of life, especially young professionals and families. And we think that the townhomes and the cottage uh, homes provide a different type of, of housing product to the traditional larger single family homes. We, we think, we hope that this community does do that. It also said that the idea is that uh, Weistown wants to develop communities with amenities that serve both an urban and suburban lifestyle. We think that this community does that because here in the townhome section, you, you could consider that an urban lifestyle. Up here in the single family uh, section, you could certainly consider that a suburban lifestyle. And the planning goals also indicate that larger planned unit developments are encouraged and should include flexible integration of a true mix of uses and unique design standards. And there's a goal of planning and promoting pedestrian circulation, walking, cycling, et cetera, et cetera and develop and link pedestrian networks, sidewalks and trails within new developments. So we think that with these connectivity of the sidewalks on both sides of the street, almost 10 miles of those, with the interconnection of the trails within the community, all funneling into this big four trail, we think uh, this community meets that goal. In terms of uh, overall density, I mentioned to you this our density is about 3.1 homes per acre. And in your Whitestown Comprehensive Plan, uh, it defines low density as uh, residential. It's between two and three and a half homes per acre. So we fit in that band of what is uh, categorized as low density. Um, I think there is one last slide. Um, so in summary, members of the Planning Commission, and thank you for bearing with me while I've uh, waltzed through these different kinds of exhibits. Um, our density, I think, is considered low density under your uh, housing type or, or under your comprehensive plan. We have a mix of housing types and designs. This provides a community, uh, which by the way, I heard that this was similar to Walker Farms. And it, there are some similarities, but this is considerably smaller than Walker Farms. I think Walker Farms may have a thousand homes in it. This is uh, around half of that, a, a little more than half of that. Um, and it has significant open space, 52 acres of open space in a smaller community. We think it promotes the pedestrian circulation. We think it provides a good link to the legacy core area. And as I mentioned, the construction of the first homes would be late next year, perhaps early 2020. And we would project that it, depending on our economy, it could take seven to 10 years to build this out. I suspect my time allotment is drawing close. And so with that, I would thank you again for your time and we'll try to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. All righty, we'll go ahead and move on to the SAC report.
the rezoning process is a le legislative act, the plan commission will make a recommendation to the town council who will then make the final decision. Because this is a legislative act, the plan commission may require that certain commitments be made as part of this rezoning and then those commitments will remain in place until removed. Before being developed, any project within the subject property will require subdivision and or development plan approval by the plan commission. This development plan fits into the goals and visions for the area as the town continues to grow and develop. Staff recommends that strong commitments are required by the developer to ensure that the future trail pathway connections are made to foster connectivity between future developments. A traffic ana impact analysis has been completed by Westport Homes and staff recommends the developer remedy any foreseeable traffic issues raised in the analysis. Staff recommends that the plan commission consider commitment comments by neighbors, business owners, development professionals, and residents of Whitestown. Staff recommends this development be forwarded onto the PUD review committee. Thank you. All righty. Um, forgive me, I'll try to be able to read all of these. Uh, handwriting isn't my forte. Um, so we have uh, April Weisenberg? Wiesenberg? That's close. Mr. President, I'm going to suggest that we turn the easel around so that those who are in the audience can, can see the, uh, the uh, display. Thank you, sir. Just a reminder to state your name and address and two minutes each. Thank you. Hi, April Wiesenberg, one of the Smith Street, um, the Legacy Core area. So this looks like a super development. We have um, looked at it a little closer by coming to the meeting that they had, you know, before. Um, we think Whitestown has done a fantastic job with growth and development, and we're excited about all the positive changes for the future. However, we are concerned with the density of this proposal. We looked at it and if you Ma'am, I'm sorry, if you can make sure that you're talking into the mic. Okay. Thank you. So if you add up the number of homes is approximately 600, and we are concerned that that is a very large complex to be putting in that area. We wondered if the council would consider maybe requiring them to do a little bit larger lot. We're not asking maybe for a lot, but maybe a half acre instead of, I think some of theirs are a third of an acre. So for us, it's just a matter of all the traffic and all the people. So that's what we'd like you to consider, maybe a little bit larger lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Aaron Miller. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Aaron Miller. I live at 3473 Firethorn Drive in Walker Farms. I also own the business at 103 South Main Street, Whitestown Pizza Gang. And also for full disclosure, I am the Deputy Clerk Treasurer for the Town of Whitestown. I come before you tonight, not as a town employee, but as a resident of Walker Farms. As a resident of Whitestown. For more than 10 years, and a business owner in Whitestown for almost four. I am a proponent of the trailside development. I believe that this development will be the catalyst for the development and revitalization of the Legacy Corps, bringing more businesses and amenities to the Legacy Corps. With all, that, with all that comes more tax dollars to be used for beautification and infrastructure improvements. As a resident, I find this very exciting, to be within walking distance of what is sure to be a destination place. As a business owner, I am also excited at the thought of roughly 1,700 new residents. This will be a wonderful opportunity for my business to grow as well as every other business in the Legacy Corps. In the almost four years I have been in business, I have spoken with many people that live in and around the Legacy Corps. Many, if not most of them, have questioned when there would be new and or more shops in the Legacy Corps. When will the town give us some attention instead of Anson? I say that time is now. Ultimately, the attention that we seek is not from the town, but rather from developers. The town is not responsible for creating new businesses or revitalizing old buildings to attract business owners. That is the responsibility, as Dax always says, of the free market developers. Developers like Westport Homes, that with 596 homes will create roughly $1.2 million in new tax revenue. That will then pique the interest of other developers that will come into the Legacy Corps and create even more tax revenue which can then be turned into infrastructure additions and upgrades. The fact of the matter is the Legacy Corps has a tremendous amount of potential, and I for one would like to see that potential realized. 
This development is a very big step in that direction. I understand there are people Time. that are opposed. Go ahead and finish If up. you could just, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Miller. I'm just about done. That are opposed to the project, with the most legitimate reasoning being increased traffic. To that I say, I have the utmost confidence in the town leadership. Over the 10 years it will take to complete this project, I have every confidence they will overcome this barrier. I truly believe this, if this project is denied, it will have a negative economic impact on this area for years to come. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Celia. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm Celia Fulmer, and my address is 102 West Pierce, Legacy Court. I'd really like for this council to think twice about okaying this project. My backyard, my garage sits on Hewitt's. I've already had a car hit it, and I've also had things stolen out of my garage like a quad and a sand rail. I am afraid that with the kids playing back there, many people walk that path to get to the Big Four Trail. I would like that Hewitt's to be a buffer zone and not an in and out going into this housing development. Many people tell us that if you don't like it, move. A lot of older people cannot move. They have been here for 35 years, have paid their houses off, limited income, they cannot move. And if we have a substantial amount of rain, will those ponds flood over? Jackson Run floods every time it rains. It goes into our crawl space, it goes into our garage, everything. I would really like for you to reconsider this project. Our kids play on Hewitt's. They cannot play on 300 or Pierce Street because of the speeding traffic. We're afraid a car will come off the road and hit them. So they play on Hewitt's. There's no sidewalks back there, nothing. They play in the streets. So please make that a buffer zone and make them use another in and out. Thank you. Thank you, Celia. Thank you. All right, um, Kenneth and, and Carol Allen. Good evening. Hi, Carol Allen. My husband and I have lived in Whitestown for 56 years. We live on the corner of East 650 and South 200, the southeast corner. It is amazing to us the way the traffic has expanded just in the past few years out there. There are cars, trucks, dump trucks, farm equipment, motorcycles, bicycles, forerunners, anything runs up and down 200 and up and down 650. A lot of these people totally disregard the stop sign. They disregard the speed limit, which is 40 miles an hour. I can't tell you how many times I hear brakes squeal, horns honk, people yelling because they blow the stop sign. I feel that this uh, project might work if there was room to have the traffic that it will bring. But I just don't see that narrow two-lane 650 is going to be helped any if the builder makes a left turn lane. That's not going to slow the traffic down. That's not going to cut down on the volume of traffic that we have running up and down that road. And I feel sorry for the people on Hewitt Street. I, I think that's just a ridiculous idea to even think about using that little muddy road for an entrance way to a subdivision as good as this one looks like it could be if the traffic could be adjusted. But I don't see any way that Hewitt could be made to work for a subdivision with people, with this many people in it. That's my main concern, is the traffic. Uh, my other concern um, is uh, I would like to know. You are at time, but I would, can she go ahead? Yeah, yeah, Let's absolutely finish. finish your question. Yeah, finish absolutely. your second I would like point. to know how many of these homes will have brick and how many of them will have stone on the outside, or will they all just be one big vinyl village? And I'd like to know the percentage of either stone or brick on the exterior and the percentage of vinyl. But I think anybody that would drive up and down 650 could see that it's, it's dangerous the way it is. 
and Res it's only going to get worse. Respectfully, ma'am, we, we gave you time and to Thank address you. that question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sir, if you could state your, your name. Hi, I, my name is Kenneth Allen. We live at 2047 South, 650 East, Whitestown. Thank you, sir. We are on the southeast corner of uh, 650 East and 200 South. We have been there for 56 years. And the tranquility will be gone, believe me, if this goes in. Here's, here's an interesting number. The number of residents and cars uh, coming onto that road every day will be in the neighborhood of 1,000. Now, where in the world are you going to put a thousand cars on a little two-lane highway? There is no consideration by the building whatsoever to do anything with the infrastructure. The homes, some of them, are predicted to be 10 feet apart. I just don't see something like this working in Whitestown. Here's an interesting fact, too. Yeah, I've, I'm sure you've read it many, many times. Maybe you're involved in the theory that people are moving to Whitestown because they want to get up, get out of urban sprawl. They want to come out into a small community and live that way. Now what's happening? We're, we're, we want to put in something like this, and I'm hearing people say, now that they're going to do this, I'm going to move. I'm going to Frankfurt. I'm going to Thorntown. So this is what I see about it. I just don't see it being a good situation for that area of the community. Uh, our, our, as my wife might have explained, right now we have all the traffic we need. My corner fence is vinyl, and it's been there about 10 years. It's been taken out four times already by people who have, who have not stopped at that corner. Two car accidents, single car accidents, one guy proceeded to go through it in the front and was drunk and went across the driveway and went through the back of the fence on the back of the property. Sorry. Time. So that's basically my concern. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any Ohio State fans in here? Join that? No. <laughs> Sorry, I think I had Mr. Tui, I had you in here, so I'm going to, I'll leave that one for last. Um, uh, Pat? Um, Owenstein? Owenstein? Yeah. 2587 South, 650 East. Good evening. Um, this seems to be a forgotten thing about rural living, egg ground. That's all it is, is out there, egg. There's something that was in the paper, AP, um, it was in the Star last year, about um, development taking 740,000 acres of Indiana land. It's farm land, plus you're destroying wildlife. You're increasing the contamination, decreasing the capacity to grow food, and believe you me, your great-grandchildren are going to be damn hungry if we don't have farmland. Also, a Purdue professor, I'm sorry, Purdue, but <laughs> made a comment about this can be taken care of with better plan development to stop the, the destruction of farmland uh, and forest. <coughs> The woods are being ripped out. We need trees, and this is taking trees out. They're gonna put little five-foot trees in, but if they die, do they get replaced? Do they grow to be a oak? Do they grow to be something that can actually clean the air? So across from us, I'm concerned about that because there's air pollution, sound pollution. I'm glad you brought that up. We're, having, we're going to have sound pollution. We have west winds bringing it to us. The sound, the dirt, the trash, it's a concern. We've been there for 40 plus years. We moved there because of rural living. All of us along that road 
time we move there to be finish. in rural living. Give us the courtesy, the time, the same as you did developer, because I think you're working pretty close to him. Give the residents that are living there the courtesy of thinking about what the people in the neighborhood that have paid taxes for years, that have taken care of the land. Ma'am, respectfully, to, we have quite a few others to go through. In getting this through. Okay. And come out and visit us. Be, be someplace other than south of White I walk that. Thank you. Uh, Rick Ellis. He's part of the petitioner. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Ken Newell. Hi, I'm Can Ken Newell. I'm at 609 West Pierce Street. Uh, I wanted to kind of follow on with the first commenter. Uh, the way that we've proposed this at a little over three acres on average, or sorry, a little over three homes per acre on average is really falsified here. If you look at the 50 acres of green space, once you take that out, and when you look at the townhomes and the cottage homes, you're looking at densities that are more in line with apartment complexes. The lot sizes on the single family homes don't approach a third of an acre. They are in line, if not even smaller than a lot of the lots in Walker Farms. Um, I actually came from Walker Farms. I moved there in 2009 and I love this town so much that we bought 11 acres at 609 West Pierce and we intend to stay there for the long term. Part of uh, my wife and I making that decision was the town's comprehensive plan. I think if we turn this into this 180 acres into 350 homes, that'll be in line with the current zoning and would really be a great benefit to the town. It'll boom the local businesses just like they want. It'll keep the infrastructure changes down just like the townspeople want. The original plan is why I'm still here and it's why I've invested heavily personally in this town. Just stick to the original plan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Are, are there any other public comments uh, to speak before we invite the petitioner for rebuttal? Yes, ma'am. Celia, if you could come up and um, I think we have one minute left out of the 20 minute allotment. Okay. Way they describe this project, it's for the small business people, not the residents. It's for the small business people. Sure, they have a right to have their business bring more business in. But the developers talked about it's for the business. It's for the small business. Nothing was taken into account about the residents that this is going to impact. I hope you all take that into mind. Thank you. Thank you, Celia. All right, Mr. Petitioner. And just as a reminder, um, there's five minutes for rebuttal. Members of the Planning Commission, again, thank you for your time this evening. I'll try to address each. Uh, of comment. Uh, one comment I would point out that there was a concern about a lack of trees or cutting down trees. As you can see from the site plan, um, this site does not have very many trees on it, but, but with our land plan, we would plant literally thousands of trees on the site. So I'm, I'm going in back in reverse order because of the, the way the uh, exhibits are. Uh, the, another comment was that traffic will be expanded. I, I can't disagree with that. There will be traffic expansion on as a result of this community, but we can improve Hewitt Street to widen it. And another uh, neighbor said, well, there's no sidewalks. We will put sidewalks on there. And in fact, it's shown on the plan that we would have sidewalks all along Hewitt Street along our stretch of the property glad to put sidewalks in the town's right of way uh, should the town direct us to do that so there'd be sidewalks all the way out to 650. In addition, there was concern about where would the kids play right up, here's Hewitt Street right here. Brian, you're away from the microphone again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hewitt Street is right down there in that corner. One of our largest park areas uh, is right next to Hewitt Street and so there's a place there for 
uh, children to play. Um, Brittany, could I ask you to go towards the end of the uh, PowerPoint, please? It's I think it's frozen right now. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> listen, you've been terrific. Uh, what I was going to mention is, is that there was, I, in your materials, uh, there's a photograph of some homes at, at the end. Yes, right there, Mr. President. And right before that, I think there was some photographs of some homes that I took in that legacy core area. My point about those is, is that these homes will be very similar in distance apart as the homes that are already in the legacy core area. And there's essentially cottage homes in the legacy core area already. That photograph right there, yes. Yeah. So that's, I just took that this weekend. It shows that homes are close together in the legacy core area because it's kind of an urban area right near an old downtown. Um, in terms of values of homes, I, I think we've established that in that legacy core area, the homes are in the uh, assessed values in the 180s, 190s, uh, low 200s. Our homes would be considerably more than that. I think that will have the effect of increasing uh, values in general of real estate in that area. Um, also, uh, one of the um, uh, folks uh, mentioned that um, we would not improve the roadways. Actually, we would, and I probably didn't make that as clear as I should have, but on 650, we'll add turn lanes so that traffic can get through there, both coming north and south. There's no question there's gonna be more traffic, but that's part of our commitment that there would be turn lanes uh, into uh, 650, or off of 650 into our uh, neighborhood. The um, the uh, uh, another comment was uh, drainage. Oh, I'm sorry, drainage. Uh, our engineers here this evening that came up at our neighborhood meeting. We had a neighborhood meeting uh, last week, and uh, someone asked that question, and Mr. Ellis from Y Engineers said that actually there's some drainage issues now on that site, but with the addition of these ponds and subterranean drainage that we would put in, actually there will be much less water coming off this site onto surrounding property owners once it's developed uh, from a, a farm field. Um, with that in mind, as I'm probably getting near the end of our time, I would just like to sum up that the comprehensive plan calls for walkability, diverse housing style, connectivity, and a wide range of homes uh, for people that want to buy a home in Whitestown. And we think that, that this community uh, does that. These homes are both suburban up in one area and urban, which we think matches their location right next door to this legacy core area. And we think that, uh, uh, you know, you can say that the density is uh, yep. further dense if you pull the 30 seconds. Out. I'm sorry, just want to give you a heads up. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for thinking of uh, giving this careful consideration and your time this evening. We'll try to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. All righty. Are there any uh, comments, questions, or concerns from the Plan Commission? One question was about brick, uh, brick versus vinyl. It looks oh. to me like most of these are kind of a combination. Yeah, do you have those ratios? I mean, I don't, I do. not necessarily exact numbers, but I mean, are the, it looks like you're not looking at a whole lot of just final what, property houses. In our, in our plan unit development, uh, Ms. Ford, we actually laid out that all homes in the traditional district would have a minimum of 75% brick or stone on the front elevation. All homes would be all other siding would either be a fiber cement board or a heavier gauge vinyl, which uh, doesn't have the wavy issues. And we have similar kinds of uh, development standards for all the other homes too, both the townhomes and the cottage homes. Okay. Does that help answer that question? Ma'am, if you. 75 percent of the front right. would be brick or stone. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep. And if there's any further comment too, just 
I for those of, that I, have... I put her on the spot. So. Yeah. Okay. No, no worries. Um, okay. Are there any other comments, questions, or concern from the plan commission? There's a question in his comment, um, Brian's comment about uh, putting sidewalks on both sides of the entrance off of Hewitt's. We certainly have plenty of room on the north side to do that, uh, to put a sidewalk. And on our side of the property, we could put one on the south side too, but we don't want to take, we, we wouldn't want to condemn anybody's property. We just want to put it in the right of way. And so we're, is, is there room, Rick, on the south side? Matt can answer this question. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Matt Dunn, uh, the division president for Westport Homes, 9210 North Meridian Street. Um, so east of our property line along Ewitt Street, there's approximately 33 feet of right of way. The existing pavement width is about 12 feet. Um, within that 33 feet, we're happy to work with the town on whatever improvements we'd like to see, whether it's a wider asphalt street section or sidewalk improvements. Really just work with the town on you know, the leadership there on what to do. Once you get west of our property line, we'll have enough space going north to provide ample right of way where we could have more of a, uh, a typical subdivision street section with sidewalks on both sides of the street uh, and uh, probably a 28 foot uh, street section back at curb to back at curb. So we're a little limited as we get to the east, but we're gonna do as much as we can utilizing that existing right of way. Once we get to our property, we'll, we'll have full blown improvements. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions or comments from the Commission? Um, I just had one really quick one for Pat. Um, Pat, I shared the, the same interest in regards to the environment and farming and where farming is today. And um, I think there's actually a lot being done and you'd be surprised. Uh, I actually work in a tech career field and how often, how, how much more often tech is getting involved in farming to where farming can actually be done uh, more organic and produce more uh, yield per crop in a warehouse than it does in a traditional farm. So there's lots of actual 